Okay, what's up guys? So this is a quick review of how to solve absolute value equations and inequalities, and we're just gonna get right into it. So for equations, let's say that I have this example here. So five X plus four, the absolute value of five X plus four equals 24. So there is a rule for solving absolute value equations. So in general, if you have an equation that is set up like this, what you're going to do is you're going to set it up into two little mini equations one where it equals the number, and then the other where it equals the negative of the number. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do in this case. So I'm gonna set this up as 5x plus four equals 24, and 5x plus four equals negative 24. And this also makes sense, right? Because setting equal to these two situations, so remember, we are ultimately taking the absolute value of this, and so what is the absolute value of negative 24? it is 24, so that's why we have to break it into two separate situations here. And so from here, now I am just going to solve as usual. So I can go ahead and subtract off the four, and then I can divide by the five, so I get x equals four. And I can do the same thing for both sides, so this is gonna be five x equals negative 28, divide both sides by five, and I get x equals negative 28 over five. Okay. Now, I do wanna talk about, though, other situations that can kind of occur. So for instance, here I have the absolute value of one minus three x plus four equals 14. So the thing about this rule is that it's very specific, right? So it makes it very clear that your absolute value has to be isolated. And so in this situation here, you'll notice I have this absolute value is not isolated because I have this plus four. So what do we have to do to deal with that? Well, before we can separate this into two separate equations, we are going to have to break this up like so. And so now I have my absolute value isolated and now it equals 10. And this is where I'm gonna break up into my two separate parts, right? Because this rule is very clear. You have to have the absolute value isolated and then it equals a number. So this becomes one minus three X equals 10 and one minus three X equals negative 10. And then I can just solve as usual. So I can go ahead and subtract the one in all cases. So I have negative three X equals either 11 or negative three X equals, oh, sorry, this should not be 11, sorry. Negative three X equals nine or negative three X equals negative 11. There we go. And so then I can divide both sides by three, negative three, so my solutions in this case are gonna be x equals negative three or x equals 11 over three. Now we have one other case to discuss when we're talking about working with absolute value equations. And this is the case where you have one expression in absolute value equals another expression in absolute value. And so when this occurs, we actually do have another rule for this. So what this, it's, it's really the same idea though. So if I have two absolute value expressions are equivalent to one another, then basically what I'm gonna do is in the first problem, I will just drop the absolute value. And in the second one, I will take one side and make it negative. And that is very similar, right, to what we did up here, right? So here we have one side that we just leave alone and then we have one side that we make negative. It's the same down here. So um, I can go ahead and just set this up. Now, the one thing that I wanna say about this is that I, I've been teaching this for a long time. I would strongly recommend that when you set up this second problem, that you force yourself to write out the negative in front. Because what I notice happens a lot is that people just forget what it means to distribute this negative and then they make a mistake and then once you've made a mistake, the whole thing's over, right? So I would just recommend force yourself to write out this extra step so that then you can see that you were forced to distribute that negative. So really what should happen here, right, is all of these signs should flip. So now this is negative three X plus seven. So we're all good there. Okay, and so now we can go ahead and solve for X as usual. So I'll just, I'll start on, on this side, why not? So I'll go ahead and subtract off the three X and then I'll subtract off the three. So this becomes, 2x equals negative 10, divide both sides by two, and I get x equals negative five. And then in the other case, let's see, I can go ahead and add the three x to each side, subtract off the three, so I get eight x equals four, 
divide both sides by 8 and I get x, x equals 1 half. And so there are my two solutions. Now there is one other special case that we need to talk about. So I've got this other case where I've got the absolute value of 4x2 plus 4x plus 2 plus 8 equals 5. So the first thing that I would do is I would subtract off the 8. But let's think about this now. I'm just going to tell you this has no solution. I can tell that right away. Now you can pause the video if you want to think about why that might be. But the reason why is because absolute value is always 0 or positive. It cannot equal a negative number. So this does not make any sense, and so then we would just say no solution. And you have to be on your toes about this, because if you did not notice this, what I see happen a lot, so I'll write this in, I'll write this in this like reddish color, the bad color. Um, okay, so what I see happen is I'll see students do this. So they'll just like push ahead, like dude, dude, here we go. We're just gonna solve everything. You will find a solution to this, right? It's the context that matters here, and so you have to be the one that kind of stops this and says, oh, I can't go any farther. So we, we, can't, we can't write those out, or we don't want to write those out. Okay, cool. So that's equations, so now let's pivot to inequalities. And this can be a thorn in people's side, but there are really two key setups when it comes to inequalities, and I'm just going to show you them. So the first case is when you have a less than or a less than or equal to. So there is a very specific setup for this, but as long as your absolute value is on the left side, and if you have less than or equal to or less than, then the setup is going to be this three part inequality. So notice what this looks like. So just like get your eyes to appreciate this before I throw us into an example. I started with this absolute value is less than or equal to C. And what I've done is I've dropped the absolute value. And then that C now is on both sides, but on the left side, it's negative. And for as far as which inequality sign do you use, so if this was less than or equal to, then this will still be less than or equal to. If this were less than, then it would be less than. So you just carry whatever inequality sign you have. Now, case two is the greater than or greater than or equal to case. And so in this case, once again, we have absolute value on the left side, but now it's greater than or greater than or equal to. And I just want you to appreciate now what this setup is. It's a totally different setup, so it's kind of important to get this right. So in the first setup, it's like I just dropped the absolute value and just rewrote the inequality, but then there is an or. You restate that same expression, and now you flip the direction of the inequality and put a negative here. So these are two very different cases, and so you have to make sure that you get these right, and they're totally driven by whether it's less than or greater than. So let's do some of these. Okay, so I've got the absolute value of 3x minus 6 is less than or equal to 12. So remember, absolute value has to be on the left side, and then it's really all dictated by what type of inequality sign we have. So in this case, I have a less than, so I'm going to break it up into this three-part inequality. Okay, so let's do it. So I am going to rewrite this as negative 12 is less than or equal to 3x minus 6, which is less than or equal to 12. Now, in the event that you want to understand why this is true, I do have videos of why we break it up like this, but just for the sake of keeping this short, I'm just kind of going into what you need to do to solve these. Um, but okay, so now let's, uh, let's go ahead and solve for x. So this is a three-part inequality. So I just need to do, what, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to all sides, and I'm trying to isolate the x. So first I'm gonna add six to all sides. So this becomes negative six is less than or equal to three x is less than or equal to 18. And then I can divide all sides by three. So I get negative two is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to six. Now, as far as what else do you do with this? It just kind of depends. Very often with inequalities, you can be asked to put your, an your um, answer on a number line. So if I wanted to do a number line, I'd have like two square brackets or closed dots that look like this. Or you could be asked to put it in interval notation. Now I have videos where I have talked about both of these skills and how to do this with inequalities. So I am going to omit this for the rest of the video, but I do have videos on this. And so if you wanna check that out, um, you can you can take a look at my playlist or my website or whatever, and I, I have tons of stuff on that. But just to keep this shorter, I'm going to skip over that. 
Okay, so what about the absolute value of 4x plus 2 is greater than 10? So now this is the other case, right? So as long as the absolute value is on the left side, you have the greater than or the greater than or equal to case. So when that happens, we're going to use this or setup. And so the way that this is going to get set up is 4x plus 2 is greater than 10 or 4x plus 2 is, flip the inequality, less than negative 10. Okay. And so there are our two cases, and then we just solve each one of these separately. So to solve this, I'll go ahead and subtract the 2. So I have 4x is greater than 8, and then I can divide both sides by 4 to get x is greater than 2. So there's one case. And then for the other case, I can subtract 2. So now I have 4x is less than negative 12. Divide both sides by 4, and I get x is less than uh, negative 3. And so again, it is all driven by whether you have less than or greater than. That is it, okay? Now, the other thing I want to talk about are special cases because these are actually very different with inequalities versus equations. So you have to kind of use your noggin when you're thinking about this. I, I actually don't think this is something that you could necessarily memorize. This has to just like make sense to you. But let's talk about this. Okay, so I have two situations. I have the absolute value of x plus 4 is less than negative 5 versus the absolute value of x plus 4 is greater than negative 5. Okay, so let's think about what we know about absolute value. So all absolute values are always greater than or equal to zero. This is always true, right? They always have to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so keeping this in mind, when can an absolute value be less than a negative number? This is never true, right? So this one here, this is never true, right? An absolute value has to always be greater than zero, so this will never be true. But now, contrast that to when is an absolute value greater than negative five? Well, all absolute value is always greater than zero, so of course this is greater than negative five, right? So this is always true. Okay, so that being said, let me make some space. So then what's the interpretation of the answer here? If this is never true, then there is no solution. And another way to represent the no solution is using the empty set notation. That is not a zero, that is a that is like a zero with a really clear cross through it. Versus when it's always true, um, this is gonna be infinite solutions. And if you wanted to represent that in interval notation, it would look like this. Okay, so now we're going to do five examples of everything kind of combined here. So I would actually really recommend that if you are trying to learn this, that you just pause for a second and try each one of these. So pause here, give it a try. Remember math is not a spectator sport and hit play when you're ready. So since this one is less than, that means that, so this is less than, I'm going to break this into the three part inequality. So this is going to become negative 12 is less than 4x minus 8, less than 12. And then I can go ahead and add the 8 to all sides. So this is going to be negative 4 is less than 4x, which is less than 20. Divide all sides by 4. And I will get that this is negative 1 is less than x is less than 5. Okay, so now we've got an equation here with two absolute values. So again, maybe just give this a try, set it up, see if you can solve it all the way. So I am going to set this up so that I have... So just dropping all the absolute value. And then remember, in the other case... This will be a negative on the outside, just so that I don't forget to distribute it. So again, it, it's not that I, like, I just notice like people's brains move really quickly. So forcing yourself to write this extra step just kind of slows you down a little bit so that you are less likely to make a mistake. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve this. So for this first one, so I'll go ahead and subtract off the 2x 
I'll subtract out the 4, so I get 3x now equals negative 11. I can divide both sides by 3 to get x equals negative 11 over 3. And then in this other case, so let's see, we can add the 2x, subtract off the 4. So I have 7x equals 3. Divide all sides by 7, and I get x equals 3 over 7. So those are my two solutions. By the way, if you're finding this content helpful, I'd love it if you'd hit that like button. Leave me a comment just to let me know how things are going, or consider hitting subscribe to the channel. Okay, so for C here, so now what I've done is I have put the absolute value on the wrong side. So again, math is like very literal. And so everything here requires that your absolute value be on the left side. So I did want to take a moment to actually talk about this. So if it's not on the left side, you just want to rewrite it so that it is so that you don't make a mistake. So I've got the absolute value of x is less than 5. So I just want to keep this mouth of the inequality opening in the same direction. So I still want to have this like opening towards the absolute value. Okay, and now that I have this all set up, I can really clearly see the situation. So this is a greater than case. So I'm going to set it up like this here. So this is going to become x minus 5 is greater than 4 or x minus 5 is less than negative 4. Okay, and so from here, I can just go ahead and add the 5 to both sides. So this will be x is greater than 9. Or, again, I can add the 5 to both sides. So this is going to be x is less than 1. Okay, and so continuing on here, so now I've got d. So I've got the absolute value of 5x plus 4 plus 6 equals 2. So again, remember, that this will only work if our number is isolated, right? That was one of our rules for equations. And so the first thing that I've got to do then is I've got to subtract off this six. So this becomes the absolute value of five X plus four equals negative four. And womp womp, we can't go any farther, right? There is no solution. So an absolute value cannot equal a negative number. So we are done. But of course, now we have to contrast this to the other situation. So I have the absolute value of 5x minus 2 is greater than or equal to negative 4. So when is this true? Never or always? Absolute value has to be 0 or greater. So yes, it is greater than negative 4 for sure. So this is always true, which means that there are infinite solutions. Okay, so... I try to keep these review videos as short as I can while still reviewing the material, but at this point you might feel like you need to see more examples to master the material. So if you're in that boat, don't worry, I've got you. So every review video that I make in this series comes with practice problems. So this is a PDF of problems with an answer key, but also I have all the video solutions worked out. So if you want to see more examples, you can do that. Just go to divideandconquermath.com and then go to the review section. And remember, you really can't learn math just by watching a bunch of YouTube videos. You really do need to practice it if you want to master that skill. So please take advantage of the materials that I have if, that, if that's uh, what you're trying to do. And by the way, my series has a lot more topics in it. It's not just absolute value. And every topic works like this. We've got the refresher video, like what you're watching here, practice problems and answer key, worked out video solutions, all that stuff. So it is all free to you. Just go to divideandconquermath.com and then go to the review section. Everything is available for free. I'd love to help you with your math. And otherwise, I'm going to leave it at that. And I hope to see you guys in another video. Bye.